All right, so starting a little bit late, but um, today I'm going to do my talk on Pug. Um, so just a little introduction. Um, bef before we get started actually going to Pug and what it is, we're going to get something out of, our, out of the way here. Um, this used to be formerly called Jade, and yes, it's now called Pug. Um, they got sued and had a change in me. So now that that's out of our system, um, Pug is used to generate HTML files. Uh, the syntax mimics that of CSS selectors, so um, period for, for class notation, pound for ID, and then just elements. Um, nesting elements is done by indenting, uh, so it's a significant white space uh, syntax. And similar to how Babel works, Pug uh, templates are transpiled into HTML. And when importing Pug templates uh, via Webpack, um, you're given a compile function. So you execute that function to get the, the template as a response. So here's an example of um, a Pug template. If you're familiar with uh, Foundation's um, responsive layout, this is their row column pairs. Um, that's what I did at UP, and I got really, really annoyed with having to type div class equals row and div class equals column all over the place. Um, so this is an example of an Angular-like template, and this is the resulting HTML. So you can see that it creates the row column pairs as well as the account widgets with the proper attributes assigned to them. So you'll notice that it saved three lines, um, it got rid of the closing tags basically, and then it also, more importantly, cuts down from 176 characters down to 80. Um, and that is due to a few things. Div tags are automatically added when you don't give it an element. So you saw the dot row and dot column. So those automatically have uh, div elements assigned to them and then takes those classes and puts them on the class attribute. In addition, uh, closing tags are automatically added and Pug's also uh, aware of which tags don't actually need uh, closing tags, such as like inputs. And there's certain scenarios where like the P tag shouldn't have a closing element. It knows to do that. So one of the benefits is code reuse. Um, if you're familiar with SAS, Pug has mixins, and that's a function that takes in a set of parameters and outputs a given output. Um, mixins can also be used to abstract out subsections of templates. So if you want to reuse a particular set of code, you can just call that mixin from multiple templates. And then parameters can be used to perform conditional statements. So they have like ifs and iterations and that sort of thing. Um, or you can also uh, interpolate it into the HTML itself. So if you're using Angular and you want to reuse a template but have a different controller name, you can pass in the controller name and use that variable to output the proper HTML. There's also include statements. Um, these includes um, basically import the, the other pug file. So any mixins available in that file as well as the, the template itself can be uh, used in that template file that imports it. Um, in addition, the full pug template, so if you actually have a full pug file, you can include the entirety of it into another file. There's also inheritance. Um, so this allows you to basically um, create areas of the template that can be implemented by a child template. These are called blocks. Um, blocks are declared in the template and are then implemented by the extending template. They can also be optionally implemented. So if you want to exclude a piece of, um, of DOM from the child, you can choose not to implement a given block. There are other features associated with Pug that I won't go into because they're not entirely useful in most um, applications. Um, there's filters, so if you want to use like Markdown or any other um, sort of uh, syntax within Pug, you can do that. That's done simply by installing yet another loader. Uh, you can also inline elements, so instead of having to type a whole bunch of divs that are um, children to each other, you can actually inline them, which is, is pretty slick when you're doing uh, like highlighting, so like using italics and code and that sort of thing. Um, Comment syntax is that of JavaScript, so you can do slash slash for single lines, you can do slash star for multi-line comments. And the best part is you can set up the, the transpiler to actually exclude comments from your rendered DOM, which for some of us, we like to get a little sassy in our comments, so removing those for production is kind of nice. Um, you can also do conditionals, as I mentioned earlier, if else statements, which is the like. Um, I don't typically use them, mostly because I write Angular, and Angular is um, dynamic in the conditionals, but uh, depending on how you use your pug template, you're typically not changing the template. 
as a result of the code, but instead um, the variables pass in Angular. Um, there's also interpolation, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. Again, your framework's typically gonna handle this better than Pug will. Um, the benefits, obviously code reuse. Um, I use this in my Java UP to duplicate a single column that was used on 30 some tables, and I got sick of uh, writing it all the time. The nice part about that is if you make that change in one place, it affects all the other places. Um, concise templating, as I mentioned, it cut it down by more than half the characters, so that's extremely nice and the main reason I use it. Um, the community support, it's an open source project. You have access to the source code. They're really good at getting back to any issues, um, which luckily there haven't been that many. Um, the flexibility is extremely nice. Um, if you want to swap out a template by using conditionals, that sort of thing, um, it's quite a bit of a benefit. And also the CSS selectors, you can actually copy what you wrote in your HTML and copy them into your CSS and just add your class uh, definitions there. It makes it extremely uh, easy to get used to both pug syntax but also CSS. Um, there are a few downsides. Um, you obviously run into fragmentation. You now have yet another thing that is doing imports and includes and you have to track those down. Um, so your code typically ends up being a little more fragmented than it would with, with uh, just regular HTML. And it's yet another dependency that you have to maintain. Um, and also another syntax. The syntax obviously isn't too bad, but when you get into the more complicated things like doing um, includes and extends, that's when it gets a little bit more challenging. Um, you also have to execute a compile function in order to get the template. There is a way around this by using a different pug HTML loader. Um, th what that will do is it'll actually execute each of the functions and give you the returning string. Um, this does take away the ability to use that contextual um, sort of behaviors like the interpolation and that sort of thing. Um, for more information, there is pugjs.org. Uh, it's pretty simplistic in the documentation. It's mostly just syntax. And then I have a series of videos out there. So a shameless plug for my YouTube channel. Yeah. All right, that's it. Any questions? Nate said he had one, but he's not here. <laughs> Thanks, Evan.